You're listening to For You Radio, where the gospel's for the unbeliever and the believer alike. We have a unique bonus sode for you in these times of trouble. Uh, service out of Lutheran Service Book on page 288 called The Litany. Troy, if you had to explain what a litany is, how would you do that? Well, really, I think the litany is just an ancient form of prayer. And it, uh, uh, the word litany comes to us through the Latin, through the Greek, uh, which ends up meaning supplication. And so a litany is a series of petitions, a series of supplications, in which often uh, one person, probably the pastor, will pray the supplication and the people will respond to it. Okay. Well, let's do it, shall we? We we shall. Uh, Let us pray. O Lord. Have mercy. O Christ. Have mercy. O Lord. Have mercy. O Christ. Hear us. God the Father in heaven. Have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment. Help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. To give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. We implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ. Hear us. O Lord. Have mercy. O Christ. Have mercy. O Lord. Have mercy. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book, To Live with Christ, Daily Devotions by Bo Geertz. Wednesday after the fourth Sunday in Lent, The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, Book 1, Chapter 1. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover, Luke 22, 1. The long journey to Jerusalem had ended. Jesus was resting with his friends in Bethany, near the top of the Mount of Olives, On the day we now call Palm Sunday, he entered the city amidst celebrating crowds, but we'll come back to these events on Palm Sunday. On the Monday and Tuesday of the week, we call Holy Week, 
Jesus taught in the temple. In the evenings, he returned to Bethany, and early the next morning again walked down through the Kidron Valley and up to the temple. But the mood in Jerusalem changed over the course of the week. His adversaries decided he must die. They must have been disgusted over all the commotion around his triumphant entry and the attention he received. Yet they didn't dare lay a hand on him, not even when he drove the crowds out of the temple. That might have caused an uproar. Then the Romans might have gotten involved, and no one knew where it would all end. The country was occupied. The adversaries were forced to exercise caution. They didn't want to lose the little freedom they still had. On top of the political considerations came the religious considerations. The leaders of the people could not tolerate a prophet who questioned all the control they had created with their regulations and minutely detailed law. Time and time again, they argued with Jesus in the temple in an attempt to expose him as a heretic. They wanted him to make a fool of himself in front of everyone. Each time, it backfired. These conversations and events are given a lot of attention during Pentecost, so we'll pass on them for now. Instead, we'll look at Wednesday and Thursday of Holy Week. So much happens during these two days that we have to begin studying them now, long before Easter, so we can have time with the most important events. The Passover was near. The city was full of pilgrims. Pontius Pilate had come from his residence on the coast, and the Roman garrison was reinforced. Passover was a huge folk festival, kind of like a Jewish equivalent to our Christmas season. It was a celebration of the exodus from Egypt, the night of liberation, when the Lord God, with his mighty arm, led his people out of the land of slavery. Thousands of Passover lambs were sacrificed in the temple at this time. Every home was filled with a hum of songs in the evenings. The disciples also prepared for the Passover, but a threatening cloud hung over them that dampened their festive spirit. Their adversaries had sinister plans. The people were disappointed with a prophet who preached only repentance and not revolution. The master himself let them know that his time was near. He said to the woman in Bethany, anointed for his burial, what was about to happen. You alone knew, O Lord. You took the path that had been laid out and determined for you. We were the ones who caused it for you. Our fall, our sin, our selfishness forced you to take this path. It wasn't only Judas who betrayed you. Each of us betrayed you. We believed more in humanity than in you. We would rather have peace in the world than trust in you. But you took this path and made it yours because we had gone astray. Praise be to you, O Jesus. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.